Hey friends, welcome back and welcome in if you're new. So uh, for those of you guys who are or have been watching my channel and been following, uh, subscribed, I have not been uploading the past few weeks um, because I've been pulling in some bigger projects that are very tedious and harder to work through with some limitations and restrictions. And uh, also I've been working through some personal struggles and challenges as would anybody and I'm trying my best to keep things together and you know get some work done and also uh, provide content on this channel as best I can. So with that being said, today's video is not as scripted or organized to the standard that I would personally like um, as uh, from my previous compared to my previous content, but I'm gonna still try to do my best to present the material and the information in the way that I want. Um, so pardon me if I am looking down at my laptop a lot and trying to you know uh, get through some of the complicated numbers and information that I normally would have memorized, but uh, I don't. So because this is gonna be more raw and um, yeah. Anyways, this video is an update to my 3950. X Ryzen workstation that I built a few months back. It's my personal gaming and editing um, computer. And if you guys have not seen the build video for it, pause this one and I'm gonna link it up here. Watch this video first, okay? Because I'm not gonna go over all the parts and everything in this video as it'll be repetitive. So watch that first, it's gonna make a lot more sense and then come back to this one, all right? Um, with that being said, let's watch the build process of this new updated or upgraded system and I'm going to talk about the benchmark and some of the numbers and the reason why I decided to make the adjustments okay and uh, yeah
All right, so assuming that you guys saw the video of the original build, I pretty much just changed the case from the Inwin 303C to the Leon Lee 011 Dynamic. Added three more Corsair QL fans because of the case and also doubled my RAM capacity from 32 gigabytes to 64. So the primary reason that sparked this idea to change my build was because of the RAM getting really hot. Now, I don't know if other brands or series of RGB RAMs can get as hot as 70 degrees C, but the Corsair Vengeance RGB Pro certainly does if you set the colors specifically to white LEDs. And even more so if you have the lighting effects set to a static color where the LEDs are just constantly lit nonstop. Reason being is because not only does overclocking the RAM already add enough heat as it is without direct airflow onto it, such as the case of my Inwin 303C, the color white requires the highest intensity of RGB uh, or RG and B settings of 255. And when you have those set to a solid constant glow with the brightest spectrum, it's going to heat up fast. So as much as I do like the 303C and wanted to do a custom loop in it eventually, which was my original plan, I just came to realize the thermals aren't as great for what I currently have in the case. Switching to the Leon Lee 011 Dynamic solves a few issues. First is that I decided to want a vertical GPU mount using Fantex bracket, which fits perfectly in this case. So having the three Corsair fans at the bottom with intake will allow airflow to have a clear path straight past the GPU versus being blocked in a traditional PCIe slot mount. The airflow would pass through the RAM, cooling it and up into the exhaust fans in the top panel where the radiator is. Looking at the recorded temperatures from HW Monitor and HW Info, which both provided the same numbers to me, I was able to drop the max temp from 70C to 58, uh, switching the, to the new Leon Lee case. A whole 12 degree difference is huge, and the average from 58 to 51. So for anyone who is working with a case that has intake fans on the bottom, I highly recommend trying a vertical GPU mount if your RAM does get hot. While we're talking about the RAM, I've gotten many people asking and commenting why I don't use uh, 3600 megahertz with Ryzen 3000. The truth is I did actually have 3600 uh, megahertz RAM of the G-Skill Trident Z Neos. However, I also had the 32s uh, or the 3200s from Corsair and I didn't notice any real world difference um, or any significant uh, difference. So I returned the 3600s uh, to save some money and went with the 3200s instead, which I actually got and already had in my uh, collection. Now, I'm not saying the 3600 has no difference. There is, for gaming that is, but personally, I just didn't notice any. Especially with the 2080 Ti, all my games at max settings, 1440p, were already hitting 120 to 144 plus FPS on average. So according to other reviewers and testing results, the small, I think like seven to 10% difference um, with 3600 megahertz uh, versus 3200 megahertz in FPS was just not noticeable to me. Maybe if I was a professional gamer and I needed like the absolute fastest speed, then I might notice, but I'm not a professional gamer. I'm just a casual gamer. However, I built this PC for pretty much productivity and working. So in workloads such as 4K video editing, I experience zero difference between 3200 and 3600 megahertz RAM. But increasing the capacity from 32 gigabytes to 64 gigabytes did make a huge difference when reading, uh, loading, and scrubbing through 4K uh, footage on my timeline and, and editing. That certainly was worth the upgrade. Now, I didn't show benchmarks or put up numbers in my original Inwin 303C case build with this system, so I did that this time around with the O11 Dynamic. Here they are. So I'm not going to ramble about the benchmark numbers because the 3950X and 2080Ti on an X570 motherboard has been around for quite a while and a ton of people have already shown benchmark tests in many different scenarios. You can easily search those numbers up and my numbers are really not out of the ordinary and pretty much aligns with what's already on the internet from reputable reviewers. So overall, my main goal in adjusting the system was to improve my thermals on RAM, CPU, and GPU, and I definitely feel I've accomplished that by switching the PC case and adding more fans with a vertical GPU mount. 
Additional notes I want to talk about before we wrap up here is I am very pleased with the aesthetics of the system. I definitely like the black case more than the white O11 dynamic as it does hide black cables, wires, and black rubber grommets in the case better while emphasizing the main components that do shine. Okay, so as I mentioned at the start of this video, I do have a lot on my plate and putting out content is more difficult for me right now. If I had missed anything or didn't go over something clearly because my scripts and improvisation is rushed and not organized, please feel free to drop comments and ask questions and I will do my best to try and answer or someone else reading can also help out as well. Thank you so much for tuning in. I really appreciate the support and I will see you in the next.